The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory and to you, Lord Christ. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. The Gospel of our Lord. Please pray with me. Holy Lord God, we thank you for the gift of your word. May it stir up the Holy Spirit inside of us and bring us closer to you. And may I become the lesser so you become the greater in this message. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Sorry, Susie. I'll get that. Don't worry. Susie's doing prayers to the people. Shelly, see, that's love. That's the love of Christ right there. Thanks, buddy. All right, well, good morning, everyone. And, uh, all right, so last week, we were focusing on this idea of the way, right? The way of Christ, the way that the, the, Jesus right now in scripture in john 14 is what's called the final discourse it's it's jesus saying i'm going to be leaving you all so let me send you off with some good tidings let me give you faith let me give you some security some insurance here so you know you're in good hands you're not going to be orphans basically i mean they're used to seeing jesus in the flesh seeing him in person and he's saying i'm going to be leaving you maybe pretty dramatic that this person, this rabbi who's transforming and changing your life is alluding to this idea that he's going to leave. They don't know if that means he's going to leave, walk away, if he's going to, you know, I don't think they get the idea that he's going to rise, whatever, but he's going to die. What are they going to do? And he's saying, I'm going to send you another advocate. So meaning there was an advocate that he is the first advocate. I will send you another advocate, as we know, is the Holy Spirit. So it's this time of comfort, of faith, of reassurance that Jesus is giving them. He's also giving them some great teaching. And what Jesus does so well is he simplifies things for us. The Bible, 66 books, right? All these laws, all these rules. In the world of religion, there's all these teachings we get of how you should act, who you should be. You got a whole book in Leviticus, you got a whole book of Deuteronomy. Rules, rules, and laws, 500 rules and laws to talk about, you know, you can't wear leather, women can't wear, you know, got to keep your heads covered, sit in the back of the church. There's all these rules and laws that are all over. I heard the laughing, good. <laughs> As Episcopalians, we're like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> um, but we get to Jesus, and so whenever I get confused about something, when someone ever asks me, well, what do you think, Father Christian, about this or about that or about this social issue? About this hot topic right now? I always go back right to, well, what does Jesus say? What does Jesus say about this? And Jesus is always trying to make things simple because we get caught up in our minds and we get so stuck in these kind of like the legalism sometimes. And as a first century Jew, you would get caught up in the legalism because you've been taught the law. But Jesus breaks it down to make it so simple. And he says... Above all else, everything we do as people following the way of Christ comes down to one thing. And what is it? Love. They ask him again, and he basically says, did I stutter? 
He talks in the Sermon on the Mount. But Jesus, what about this? Love God, love your neighbor. But Jesus, what about this thing that happened? Love God, love your neighbor. Everything we do is leading to this point of so we can be falling in love with our Lord. Falling in love with our Lord. It is an active thing. This is an active journey we're on that everything we do when we come here on Sunday should be leading us to fall in love with God that it gets culminated to this altar when we break bread together and we do it together. But everything we do in this church just on Sundays should be filled with Christ's love. Seeking Christ's love. Falling in love with God. Not just loving God. Linda Brown is here. I had to email her this morning at 7 in the morning. I was like, Linda, is it okay if I talk about you and your husband about this thing you guys talked about loving God? <laughs> Thank God she was up. She's like, yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> but they talked about in their testimony that everything changed for them when they moved from just loving God to falling in love with God. Oh, man, that's, oh, that just, you could just feel that. There's passion. There's exuberance. There's activity going on there. So anyone ask you, do you love God? Most of you are going to be like, yeah, I love God. But are you falling in love with God every day of your life? Falling into a deeper relationship with this God that is just stirring your heart, transforming your heart, making you do things and say things you never thought you could ever do or to say. Building your relationships with other people you never thought you could build. Being able to forgive others for hurts that came. Helping to have trust and faith in, 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 in money or in resources or something you never thought would be there because of this loving relationship, this thing that God calls us today in Scripture. And the first thing he says, if you want a relationship, the first thing he says, if you love me. First part, that's where we start. If we start anywhere else, we're missing the mark. So we have our greeter teams to here today. Starts off with love. You as a greeter saw it today, filled with love. You got the little Bastion kids down there, little Charlie's down there handing out programs. The love of Christ is sitting there billowing. Everything we do here is for love. Peter back there doing the sound. Peter's not doing it because he loves being an AV guy. He does it because he loves Christ and he's here. This is a way that he exercises his faith, right? Yesterday, you all didn't just show up just to go put some mulch around some place. There was a love that was happening. Peter told me he is, man, he didn't say like, hey, we really did a good job of landscaping yesterday. I'm talking about the work day we had yesterday at the Samaritan house. About 40 people showed up, maybe more, to, to sit there and to help create a better, uh, um, the landscaping for uh, the Samaritan house. First thing that Peter said was, it wasn't, man, we did a good job, pat on the back. He said the Holy Spirit was present there. Holy Spirit was present. It's what Jesus is talking about. If you love me, I will send you someone to be with you always. The Holy Spirit, the advocate to be with you. You think I'm leaving, but I'm not. I'm always with you. In fact, I am in you. But a lot of people out there are not going to know that because they don't see me. See, God is always around us. It's up to us to reveal him in our lives, to reveal him in our own lives. And how do we do that? Through what? Love. If we are not actively loving one another, if we're not actively loving God, if we are not actively in a place of love, of nurturing that love for God, of falling in love with God, if we're not doing that, we are not revealing God. There's a certain theology out there that says God needs us. I don't think God needs us. God chooses to be in a relationship with us because he loves us. All right, there's no need. God chose, the Holy Trinity chose that I want to make. I want to create this. I want to create all of you out of love. We need him. We love him. And through that, we get everything that we need. But it only happens if we can center ourselves in this love. We don't do it just out of obedience. We don't do it just because the law says. We don't do it just because the Bible says. We don't do it just out of ritual. We don't do it just because the coffee is good on Sundays, because it's not. We don't do it just because the pastries are good, because they are, and because of Bob. You. Um, we do it because we are finding this love. We are falling in love with this God who could do more than we can ask or imagine. We are falling in love with this God. You know, thinking about this and looking over this this week, kind of remind uh, reminded me of like my eighth grade self <laughs> uh, of that puppy love that I had for Jory Gould, <laughs> and that love that you had when, if you can remember. Whenever that was, middle school, high school, of just, now I'm going to take you back to the Chicago suburbs back in the day, 
um, when you know you, you would just go gaga over this person. I went gaga over Jory Gould. And, and what are some of the things that I would do? Well, I, I started thinking about poetry, right? And, and I started wanting to send her poetry, so I create that little thing. I don't know if you kids still do that, you know, the little thing that does like this. And I had little poetry things in there that I probably stole from like uh, like Brian Adams, you know, because he was a great poet, right? And so I read it in there. <laughs> And then I hand it to her, and she's like, is that a song on the radio? No, no, I wrote that, right? Um, but but just, 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 I wanted to express my love to her. And then I would, um, uh, the, little, the little bracelets, I go to the mall, Hawthorne Mall in Libertyville, Illinois, and uh, get this like fake gold silver thing, and I get our names, Jory and Christian, stitched on the front, and then I put the date of when we first started like going out, or whatever you called it back then, and on the back. And then I gave her one, and I had one, and we walked around with it, right? I had to invest, I had to like mow a bunch of lawns to be able to afford that, to go buy that bracelet, to give it to her. Because I was just like in, like in love with, for, with her, right? And then at night, uh, I would take, be, take this time, I look so forward to around like I think 6.30, I could get there, and kids, you're not going to be able to follow me on this, um, there was a time when you would actually use these things to, um, to like talk into them. Um, <laughs> you, 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 you wouldn't just type, you would, you would actually like remember this number, like you had to memorize it. Like you had all these numbers in your head and you would have to dial it in here, and then you put it to your ear, and then you share words. I know it's strange. It's weird. So, and then there was a cord, though. There was a cord, and you like get this thirty-foot cord you get from um, from like Radio Shack and attach it so you can like go into your room and hide here. And then your sister could get on the phone too and start making fun of you while you're talking to this girl you love. So you don't have to deal with it, Abby. See, I have to deal. I had to deal with that. You got it good. You have like maybe your own cell phone. This is not how it works, right? Now your parents have to put like tracker devices on your phone to find out if you're all right. So I would go there at night and sit there for like hours until my sister would like break up the phone call or my mom would say you're racking up a phone bill because at the time you had to pay for actual landline usage. But it was intentional and I looked forward to it. And it was so joyful and all I wanted to do was talk about it and share this love that I had, that I had for Jory Gould. And, uh, and then I would save up money and we would go to Olive Garden <laughs> and we would go and get refills on salad and because it was the best <laughs> salad and coke and uh, bread sticks it's just in soup they just hardest working waiters in the whole business they just keep on bringing it to you with a smile on their face and I probably didn't even know how to tip then it was just horrible so um, but those memories of that of just being even if no was puppy dog love uh, before until later in life when you get a little more cynical Get a more guarded of your heart, um, of just being able to just pour forth and be in this relationship with this person who receives it is, is incredible. And sometimes that's hard to have with humans, right? But that is exactly what God wants us to have with him. He wants this vulnerable love with him. He wants us to just unconditionally offer our hurts and our pains to him and be able to say everything and anything we want and to be experiencing not just this legalistic love that just says we do this because, it, because the Bible tells us to, but we do it because we're in a relationship with him and we're intentional with it and we take time to reveal him and we love it and it's joyous, it's celebratory, it's full of compassion and it changes us, it changes us. They've been focusing on this love all week long and, and uh, I've been focusing on love all week long, you know, because I'm a priest and I should, uh, but I went to uh, you know, work out at LA Fitness um, I know you can't tell, but I do, and so I go there. But I got a trainer now, thanks to Alexis. Um, but uh, we uh, we would go we'd go there, and and I'll, I'll admit I, I like to put out my sin out there and confess to you guys. Um, so like judgment sneaks right in, right? And, and and like talking about people is easy at a place like LA Fitness, right? Because it's sort of like to me, it's sort of like the LA nightclub. It's like there's no nightclub in Stewart, but you have LA Fitness, right? So in LA, when you want to be seen and like look sexy and try to get someone's number, you go to the club and you roll up in a real hot car. If you had one, I had an Echo, so I didn't. But so I but but I still get in there and you want to people look at you. You look at them. You know, you get bottle service. Kids, don't worry about it. You'll learn about it later. So there's a, so you get you want to be seen and like but, but see they, there's not anything. Like like that here in Stewart, but there's LA Fitness. So you walk in LA Fitness, and everyone walks in, they're all like jacked, you know, and they're all walking around, <laughs> and like looking at each other, you know, and like checking other people out, you know. I literally walk in with my collar, so I got no game, so, but the people just walk around, <laughs> and the girls are there, and everyone looks great. I mean, this, 
honestly, people take their working out very seriously, which is great, which is good. Um, but it takes, like, it really challenges me because I want to sit there and be, like, in my head, and be like, oh, my God, this guy's such a tool, right? But, like, that's, that's not good, right? There is no love in me sitting there judging someone because of sort of what I am interpreting their actions, right? Um, and me turning to my buddy and gossiping about someone ain't good. That ain't, that ain't the love that God is calling us to do. If we look at uh, 1 Corinthians, if we want to reveal God, we need to be in love. If we are not in love, we are not revealing God. We are shutting off God in our life. What, is, what does Paul say about love? He said, love, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Later in Galatians, he says, the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. So we got to be aware of when we're shutting off this love, when we're cutting off this, this movement of God's love in all of us. Because when we judge, when we gossip, that's the easiest one to pick because we, you know, it's, 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 it happens so easily and then you realize you're gossiping. Gossip, we get impatient, we turn to anger, we turn to envy, we start boasting. I'm just going to what Paul's talking about. We dishonor others. We become selfish and self-seeking and making it all about ourselves. What we're doing is putting up walls to this holy trinity, this movement that Jesus is talking about today in Scripture. Because the beautiful thing what Jesus talks about, he says, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. So he's making that connection. But then he says, wait a minute, and I am in you. So, so, so God, who is Jesus, who's in the Father, the Father is in him, is in you. Stand up, brother. You look so handsome. We've got to get you up here. <laughs> Sorry. So Alexander Connolly, this holy trinity, this, the advocate, the Holy Spirit that is moving through the God and through Father, through Jesus, says, Jesus says, and I am in Alexander. Moving, this ball, this incredible love energy that created everything, created the whole world, is moving in Alexander, filling every cell of his body. Giving him every gift that he needs. Nothing but unconditional love for Alexander. And all Alexander has to choose, there's enough pressure on you here, is <laughs> to follow the commandment that Jesus gives, to obey him. And that obey, what is that law? To love him. To love Jesus with his whole heart, mind, and soul. And to love his neighbors as himself. We're just going to start about, we're just, we'll talk later about the neighbors. Let's today just talk about God. So, thank you, brother. That was great. All so right. you are filled with God's love. And it's a choice that we all have to say, what am I doing today to invite and to reveal more of this love that's pouring through me? Let me get that goo goo gaga love for God, right? <laughs> thank you, brother. Everyone all give right. this guy a round of applause, right? <laughs> so we do this by getting intentional. Last week, we talked about how we get intentional. Scripture. That reveals God's love inside of us. If we are not embedding ourselves in Scripture every day, we are missing the mark. Prayer. If we are not having intentional time to pray with God every day, we're missing the mark and not revealing that God's love. Sacraments. If we're not coming every Sunday to the table with all of us together, we need to do it corporately. We can't just be our solo act. Then we are going to miss the mark on that. Service, if we're not going out and doing the work of God, of spreading the God, of giving it away, then we're, not, we're going to miss the mark. And then investment and sacrifice. If we're not giving it away through our talents, through our gifts, sometimes even through our money, if we're not giving it away, then we are not in this loving relationship with God who provides all things that are good. Right? She knows. She knows. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, sister. Can I get an Amen. <laughs> So let's get intentional this week. How many people saw the war room? Right. 
the name's a little weird, but it actually is a Christian movie. Um, <laughs> but, but it's about a woman who creates a, a, a prayer room. Let's call it prayer room. And, and sets off, and spiritual directors will tell you this, that if you're going to start getting very intentional about your prayer life, set aside a, a special location just for that, as opposed to my bedroom or the couch or the same place where I study. No, set a, like a certain chair that's just for praying. And get intentional about this love life that you want to have with God. And maybe you already have an exuberant, full, loving relationship with God, but it always gets deeper. As we know in any relationship, you can always go deeper in your love for your spouse, for your friend, for your parents, through your neighbors, for anyone. So with God right now, we're just going to be focusing on how do we start to fall more deeply in love with God. And one way to do that is get intentional. Set that time. Just as eighth grade Christian would go take that corded phone, go all the way there, and tuck himself in here and put a pillow here so my sister wouldn't hear, and sit there and just talk with Jory all night for like an hour and a half to two hours. This is what we want to do with God. <laughs> because when we do that with God, then God can just emanate his love and just, just surprise us with joy and compassion and starts changing our hearts. So to, to go back to that the, the LA Fitness story, what happened is I'm focusing on this love and there's this guy who I judge and I'm like, okay, i got to be focusing on love, focusing on love. And it starts changing me. And I start going up to these guys and talking to them saying, okay, this is my brother who I love too. And, and I worked out of this, like, this bench, you know, the bench press thing. And uh, I got it sweaty and I, and I forgot to clean it off, which is like a faux pas. And I'm walking away and this other dude comes over there, like this like meathead number two walks over there. Not meathead, like this great guy number two walks over there. <laughs> And, and, I, and I go over there. I'm like, oh, dude, I'm so sorry, man. I forgot, I forgot to clean this and clean it off. And I just clean it for him. And he's like, oh, thanks, brother. That's really cool of you, man. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah no problem. I never would have done that a couple weeks ago. But it's sort of like just God, like, kicking me in the butt. Like, will you go love on this guy? Like, you drop the ball. Like, go do that. And I'm the one judging them. I'm the one who's doing that. I'm the one who's, I'm the one who's blocking off God to allow something to happen. There might be like eight good buddy friends I can make in that place, but I'm not letting it happen because I'm sitting there being like, oh God, these meatheads, right? That ain't good. That ain't good. God forgives. God restores. God renews. God redeems. Love. This week, what's one intentional act you can do every single day to facilitate, to be a catalyst for your love life with God? Maybe it's that walk on the beach that you take where you go into the water and you sit there and just rest in God's beauty and say, my God, I love you. Help me receive your love. It's a walk you take. It's a half hour you take where you just read scripture and say, God, reveal your love to me. There's a hundred different answers right here. Do it, seize upon it, and let's just fall deeply and more deeply in love with our God who loves us more than we can ask or imagine. Amen.